Hey folks, welcome to Working with Shared Components, Working with the Graphic Logo. Now, before we jump into the tutorial, you probably already have a graphic logo of some sort um, if you want to, if you're actually watching this video. But many of you may want to replace the generic text or the, the generic logo that comes with the, the theme product with your own. So I'm actually going to show you how to create something online very quickly and very easily. So there'll be about a two minute segment in the video that covers that and then we'll get into actually um, importing into the site and whatnot. Actually what we're going to cover is creating a graphic logo. We're going to import that logo into the site. We're going to add the graphic logo to the library page and then we're going to preview and reposition it because just dropping it into the library page is not going to give it the right position in our web pages. We need to fiddle with the positioning through the style sheet. So let's start off with creating our own logo, shall we? I'm going to go to a site called Cool Text. You can Google graphic logos online and you'll find a million places now where you can actually create your own logos. All right. Um, so let's uh, let's start off with something now. When you create a graphic logo, I suggest you create something that does not have a background color. You see this particular thing here? It's got black in the background. That tells me that there is some sort of a background color. Right. If you see something animated, chances are that it's going to have a background color as well or the animation wouldn't look any good. So when you're creating a logo, we're going to create something um, using this particular font right here, I think, um, where it's just a, a white, which usually means transparent. So let's click on this puppy here. Um, for Zoo Golf, I'm going to type in the logo name. You can change the font here. I like that font, so we're keeping it. Right, and you can fiddle around with all sorts of things right here. But basically what we're looking for is a file format of a PNG with transparency. And that's why I love cooltext.com because it provides the logo with a transparent background so that the, everything behind it shows through and looks outstanding. So with that said, once you've made your logo and selected your font, you just hit create logo. You hit download image. And it downloads it to wherever. For me, I'm going to download it to my desktop because that's where I have it set as a default. We can close down cool text. Right? And now we can jump right into the actual tutorial, which is importing the graphic into the site. So here's my site. Typically when working with logos, what I'll probably do is um, drag it into my uh, site themed images folder. Okay, I've got a couple things in here already. Um, but I'm just going to drag this cool text logo right in here, right into my themed images folder. And if you notice when I'm dragging it in, actually I'm going to put it on my desktop so you can see it. If, when I'm importing an image, I just drag it and drop it right on top of the folder where I want it imported into. Okay, and then I can see it's added in down here. Nice thing about cool text as well is if you want to keep the name of the file, it works just fine on the web because it's all lowercase, no spaces, no punctuation, and numbers. So hey, that works out just as well. So we're just going to leave it named the way it is because cool text tells me that it must be the logo because that's the only thing I've ever created with cool text. So, okay, let's just leave that folder open for now because we're going to be coming back to it in a second. Now we want to add the graphic logo. So let's actually, before we do anything, when we're working with library pages, we want to preview a page in our browser, right? So we can actually watch the progress. Now this here, that's a graphic logo. This is the website name, that's just regular text. We're going to be replacing this with the new logo. And when we do that, we can probably get rid of the website name text because we're actually creating a text logo, right? Maybe we'll keep the tagline. Tell you what, we will keep the tagline. We'll replace the graphic logo and remove the website name. So let's do that. I go to my library folder and I open up the shared folder and I open up my graphic logo page. Now there's the graphic logo that I had there already. I could just delete it. Let's go to the website name page. We're going to remove this text. You could keep the graphic logo and the text if you wanted to and reposition the two, but that's the way that the, the, a lot of the themes are set up by default anyway, so you, you get a good idea of how they work together. In this case, I want to show you how to replace it all together. So we're going to get rid of the website name text and we're just going to save. And the final thing is the tagline. Uh, really cool logo here. I'll just put that in there just so we can have a little bit of something to play with. 
And finally, let's get back to our graphic logo page. Now, what we want to do here is we want to go to our site, themed images, and our graphic uh, cool text logo, and just drag it on the page. Just drag and drop it on there. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip, and this is where it gets a little bit weird in, in some of the editors, uh, pretty much all of them, is when you drag something onto the page like an image, it's automatically wrapped in a paragraph tag. You don't really want that. The reason being is the padding and margins for <clears throat> certain browsers when regarding paragraph tags may vary just a little bit and if you need an image positioned precisely in the page um, having it wrapped in a paragraph tag may make it appear slightly different in some browsers so I'm just gonna go to code view I'm going to get rid of any comment tags I'm going to get rid of any non-breaking spaces, which is that little and, NBSP, and semicolon, which was added into the page when I dropped it there. I'm going to get rid of the paragraph tag, and over here, I'm going to get rid of the paragraph tag. So really, all you want is the body tag, the body tag, the image, and that's it. Nothing else. It should be an opening bracket and a closing bracket and nothing else. We can go back to the design view. Now that we've added the image to the page, there's something else we need to do. We need to make sure that this is a responsive logo so that it resizes in the browser as our page gets smaller. And the way to do this is to double click on the image, click on the appearance tab, deselect the specify image or specify size and click OK. It looks just the same. That's because it's going to use the default size. If you don't specify a height and a width, it's just going to show up as it's supposed to. Right? We do not want to size our images in our page through HTML. We want the style sheet to <clears throat> resize it for smaller browsers, but other than that, we should size our images to fit into our page ahead of time. All right? So now we can save our page. All right? We've removed the website name, we've updated the tagline, we can go back to our browser, hit the refresh button, and boom! Oh, that looks great! Well, many of you may not like the font type. I think it was just kind of cool. I wouldn't stick. I wouldn't use this in a, in a real website. But now we've got the really cool text logo here. You can see that they work quite well. That the the tagline doesn't bump into the image, <clears throat> which is bonus. But let's say we want to reposition the Frisoo Golf. As it happens, um, you know what? I think I want to have this justified. I want this to be centered between just under the menu and just above this stitch line right here. Your template's going to look different, so you know, it may or may not work out, but I want this to move down a little bit, and we're just going to move it over a little bit as well, so maybe it lines up with the word pages. Now, this is the repositioning part. Let's just close everything down here in terms of folders, so we can sort of start fresh. And to reposition things, you open up the site, the styles, and the styles.css. Now we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for the header component section, which starts right around here. It, it could start lower in the page or higher in your template, your template, depending on what other information we have in here. But basically we're looking for the um, graphic logo and the tagline, because those are the two things we're going to reposition. And to change the positioning from the top, if we want it further from the top of the page, and if we go back, we want it pushed down further from the top, so it's a little closer to the bottom, but not much. We just have to nudge it down by, I'm going to say 20 more pixels, or 10 more pixels, for a total of 20. So we have a top positioning of 10 pixels, and this is where just fiddling around comes into play. And when I design the templates, I could sit and play around with something for like 10 or 15 different iterations until I get it just the way I want it, depending on, you know, you move it once and you go, oh, it's where you wanted it, but it may not have the same appearance as you thought it would have, so you move it somewhere else. So we'll start off by moving it 20 from the top, and I wanted it further from the left, so we're going to start off with 100 from the left and see what happens, right? And this is why I like keeping the page open in the browser, because now I can just hit refresh, and oop, almost, so maybe a little bit, I think height-wise it's perfect. Um, I think it's too far from the left now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reduce that to 80 pixels from the left and save it. But I also need to tweak that tagline. You see how with a really cool logo, now it's smushed. Well, we have to go back to our editor here and we have to play with the tagline positioning and increase the top positioning as well. Now, if we move the, if they were perfectly in line before, the mathematics tells me if I 
added 10 pixels to the top for the graphic logo. I'm just going to add 10 pixels to the tagline and that should do the trick. I'll save it and refresh it and bang. Yep, that's good. Except I don't like where the tagline, I want this to be more in line with the, the bottom of the F over here. And that's, uh, I don't know, let's, um, let's try 80. This is where the guesswork comes in. Really, I'm not measuring anything. Uh, 80 is too much. So you can sort of see where we start to fiddle around here. 100, save, go back. Okay, there we go. That is nice. Okay, so that's how to import a graphic logo or even create a graphic logo, import it into your site, fiddle around with its positioning, and make sure that it's responsive so that as the page gets smaller, so does the logo. And we're going to cover that off in a later chapter under working with mobile design. So we're going to, we're going to show you how you can tweak out your design for your mobile devices. And when I'm talking mobile devices, I'm really talking about phones, very small screens uh, like, like phones and, and uh, uh, note, small note pad sort of things here. Anything smaller than, a, I guess, an iPad mini, really, um, is what we're talking about for a mobile design. But um, that's how to get things in there and position them and play around with them. And like I said, you can, you can start, you can combine different elements. And you can see that we have we combined the tagline and the graphic logo and use the positioning and the style sheet to line them up together. 